All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on back. Continuing along, of course, our Tuesday, our post Traders Talk Edition afternoon meeting right here in the Cyber Group Trading Room and streaming across social media, Facebook and YouTube. Welcome on back, guys. Let's get a quick sound check just to begin. Make sure everyone can hear me loud and clear. I want to hop right to it. Just told a couple of us here in the chat board uh, there's a stock running right now, it's making a nice pop at least. And I'm in it. I know a couple of us at least are in it. We have the Dow, of course, to begin. But great to see everybody. Daniel Patrick, uh, Mark Reg, Lawrence, Kathleen, Will. Great to see you all loud and clear from all. Perfect. All right. We should be good on social. So with that in mind, guys, let's start. So the uh, the Dow, we ended up seeing a big gap up early on this morning. We kind of covered this during our Traders Talk workshop. So for all of our members here inside our trading room, at least, and all of our trial members here testing at our room for the week, uh, we're going to have that up on the website on your student dashboard by this evening. Uh, we, we conducted a live workshop earlier this morning, and we kind of went over what happened this morning, guys, You know, saying for the most part that with as much of a, of a gap up as we had here in, in pre-market, Market and run up at least. Uh, you know, if the market pulls back, it would be a good idea to try and find stocks and trade stocks that are shortable. So we ended up covering NCLH. We ended up covering the side list stocks for the most part. Uh, we'll turn over to Neo here, but at least going into the afternoon, the Dow did recover. Uh, it's been a pretty slow afternoon thus far across the board. A few stocks, small cap stocks, make some better moves at least right now. So. For right now, we'll check out NEO NIO. We'll turn over to our pre market here. But as you guys could just see right from the market open, this stock ended up just tanking, you know, consolidated a little bit. Ended up pulling right back down, though, broke below support off of 720. And from there, just, you know, really, really did a good job. So NEO ended up being a great short. Still looks pretty good going into the close. Actually, most recently, the stock ended up breaking underneath 670. That was a bit of a price level to watch just from pre-market. So, you know, you know, we'll come back to this even. I wouldn't be surprised if this makes the afternoon list. My only gripe on it right now is just that it's pretty slow. So I want to find some better opportunity. We, we already have good opportunity right now. So with that in mind, we'll turn over to the one I just said that was making a nice move up, PHUN Fun. I uh, just made a pullback right as I had said that may have jinxed it. But right now I'm long on this trade from 150. I have my stop set. So if I happen to have this crap out the complete other way, and if I don't make profits here, then so be it not to just shrug it off. But A, we did pretty good in the morning. B, you know, I have my stop set. So at the minimum, it's going to be a two cent loss for me. I'm in from 150. Uh, for right now, I still have the utmost confidence that this can continue to move up going into the afternoon. Um, I mostly say that. At first, based on just what we see on the daily chart, this stock was never, you know, five hundred dollars back in two thousand nineteen, or four hundred dollars, or whatever it is. Uh, you know, reverse splits factor in. So I don't remember when fun here was exactly split reverse split back, you know, a little while ago. But it's dropped off over time. Uh, mostly companies do this just to remain above Nasdaq listing requirements. So you know this fund trade eventually, maybe off of good news, maybe just for the hell of it from day traders that are looking to you know push the stock up, or rather just if traders look to cover short, you see a big short squeeze where we end up seeing the stock make a nice run up. I mean we've seen that across the board the last week, the last two weeks between all these stocks that are up 200, 500 plus percent. Now they dump back down. So don't get me wrong. I'm not looking to hold on to this fun trade right now going into tomorrow, going into the you know, rest of the week. I'll look to day trade this, get back in over and over. Uh, I'm going to hang on to this trade during this meeting at least. We'll see where it takes me. But yeah, for right now, this fun trade I wanted to just jump to right away. It was popping at least once I started. Maybe I'll turn away and this thing will run back up to 180. So let's uh let's move on to the next one right now, guys. This one's been pretty choppy. This CLIR stock uh, most recently made a new move back up near the highs. A nice trend off the lows, but otherwise it's been a very choppy trend minute by minute. When I say the lows, I mean the dips. A uh, clear trend of higher lows across the last hour. I had a question here from Michael in our chat board. I'll get to that in just a sec, Mike. Uh, the CLIR stock, though, here's the line I'm referring to. It's not perfect, but you know, beautiful display of higher lows for every time the stock is dipping. It's making a higher dip, a higher low. Uh, but recently here, I did all right on this. I, I took a five or six cent loss here off 280, false breakout. I jumped in again once it pushed over 280, and I put, picked up 16 or so cents. Um, I got out just because it wasn't breaking higher. And at least now it's been very rugged up and down here. So 
Uh, it seems like it's going to pull back towards this line I have up. You know, of course, remember stocks don't trade perfectly in a trend, but it seems like this stock has across the last hour, last hour and a half, in terms of the uh, higher lows. So I wouldn't be surprised if it if it pulls back towards like two seventy ish, two sixty five. Um, you know, right now I'll put this on our list, the CLIR stock. You know, given this recent run up. I'll check in on the daily chart here in a minute. It's near the highs. So given the range up, down, then back up, you know, it's been a fun stock to follow. No pun intended with the last one, but um, I don't know what the news is on this trade. I don't really care as much at this point. Just taking a look here on the daily chart. Yeah, I mean, unlike fun, this stock doesn't seem to have been split over and over. It's not like, you know, exponentially running up here. It's a $12 stock back in 2014. Eh, nothing really special about the daily chart there. All right. I mean, hey, the stock's made a big move uh, already today, guys, up 268%. So if you're going to buy this stock and you know hold into the close, it better be worth it. Meaning you got to make sure this stock is going to make a very strong breakthrough resistance. Three and 305 are two levels that stand out to me right now in the uh, order book. So we got the CLIR trade. At least for now, we'll, we'll feature this on our list. You know, focus on this. Uh, the the UONE trade. Are you kidding me? We got a few chats in here from our uh, trading room members here. Uh, and Terrence picking up a dollar and eight cents. He was in from seventeen, got out at eighteen oh eight. So out before the halt. Good idea, Terrence. In and out quick. So take the money and run. Very nice trade. Um, and you know, here, here's the thing: on a trade like this, you would hear Fausto say it himself if he was doing this very meeting. Listen, if you're uncomfortable with the stock and the spread, and if you're just interested in trading it, I mean, there are other stocks to trade. But if you want to practice, lower the amount of shares. Just one share, right? Just like Fausto says. So even if this was on a small amount of shares, Terrence, it's getting the practice in, right? So most importantly, you ended up buying when the stock was moving up, right? Broke through resistance on the way up, just like we covered even from yesterday's class. So fantastic trade, Terrence. I got the chat here from Dom saying UONE halted. He says he crushed it today on the UONE. Congratulations, Dom, as well. Jerry doing a number on a couple of other trades we'll get to perhaps in a moment. All right, so U U O N E will of course put this on our list at this point, guys. I mean, the stock's up two hundred percent, much like that C L I R, but this much steadier right now. Uh, obviously, it would be easy to say, you know, this thing can keep going up very nicely. I don't know if this is even all time highs right now. Kind of looks like it. Uh, Fifteen, sixteen. Nope. Kind of getting there. Year 2004. This is back from April 2004. Stock was like $20.30. Pretty interesting. I don't know if that's the all time high. You got to go a little while back. Yeah, 24, 25 bucks, a little bit more. All right. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of getting close up to there. It's not all time highs officially. But yeah, this UONE trade, I mean, given the move up, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it gaps up off the reopen. You could already see a bid there from the NASDAQ 2061 flashing in, in and out. But, um, you know, if it gaps up off the reopen, don't be surprised if it pulls back and if it gets halted on the way down, I'm telling you, no bueno. That's what happened earlier, guys. I don't know if anyone got trapped in this before here, but I'm sure it would have been tough as hell to get out of that, get out of that uh, trade once it's halted on the way down. Turn over to CLIR quick here, guys, just because I saw it make a nice pop from my screen. So CLIR, getting a little close towards its high of the day. 31,000 share order on the ask at three, uh, 320. All right, from Michael, he was asking earlier, Josh, do you ever move your stops up? Yeah, if I'm in a trade and, and if I'm once we're out of this meeting, Mike, if I'm still in this trade with fun, I'll look to do it. You know, I, I feel like there's more potential on the fun trade given how much it's dropped off. So I'd said earlier in the chat board with the right type of buying, I, I think that this can make a really big squeeze going into the close. So I'm more hoping on than anything than that, right? So I'm going to do the rest of this meeting just in this trade. If I get stopped out, I don't get stopped out. But, um, you know, just given that range on the daily chart, that's just why I say that. So if I'm still in the trade by the time the meeting is done, and I'll manage the trade going into the close. I'll move up my you know point to where I say you know I'm just going to take the profit. 
And I'll tell you, I think Fausto had a good example of seeing a big order on the ass get filled. If it wasn't this morning, it was the uh, the morning yesterday. This thing's making a push up. Maybe we'll come back to this and it'll test 320. Watch the probably the second I st step away, this thing will crack. All right. So we've been over the top two already, guys. Let's just go through uh, top to bottom from gainers to losers list. ROSU really quickly, pump and dump. So no surprise there for a stock that's up as much as this was. It pulled back at 930. And unfortunately, just with this one, it's not to say we expected the dump. But once it breaks through support, if it's not getting back up there and holding it again as support nicely, it's just going to slow down and eventually you know, drop more and more. So this thing's been all over the place lately. So the MCE Petrid, I feel like the same thing, right off five. Uh, this OPTT trade, I, I scratched on this earlier. I was in this trade earlier off of, what was it? I think it was 89 cents right here. It popped up a little bit. I hung on and pulled back. I ended up just getting out right at 89 cents. I mean, another stock much like fun. You could just see on this one, at least more on the daily chart, it's not like it dropped off recently, like 500, but you know, a big drop off over the last year, year and a half. Um, I know this stock's been split in the past numerous times. So we'll put this on our list, at least in hopes of a squeeze up going into the close. OPTT. It's one that we're fair, somewhat familiar with. I don't think I've traded this one in, in a little while. Uh, PLM, another cheapy popped up earlier. Not really too much uh, going on there. NTN trade, new high of the day, big volume spike a moment ago. I don't like the up and down move and then the volume crapped out afterwards. I, just, I mean, I like the fact it's near the highs, but nothing really else impresses me there. We'll come back to this, I guess. NTN. All right, fun we covered. Uh, IDYA, I mean, this thing's been all over the place. Early on in pre-market, ended up gapping up, and you know it was top percent gainer at one point, but you know pulled back after the open. What's interesting about this trade is that it's shortable. I didn't realize that until I think it was like mid-afternoon. After the run up, it ended up dumping back down, got halted on the way down, and again, typically when a stock gets halted on the way down, usually ends up reopening up lower, pulling back more. And, you can see that that's exactly what happened there. Uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if it ends up filling the gap at some point, whether it be today even or going into tomorrow. But for right now, even if it is shortable, I'm not going to put this on our list. It's just like spreads big, order books pretty illiquid. All right. Uh, what, what is this? Yeah, U1K. Interesting. Class D stock. Much cheaper. Pretty interesting. I didn't notice this until right now. You want trade still going. There we go. All right. So what happened here? Off the reopen. Moved up higher. Then we had the pullback, and now it's you know back up, of course. All right, so we're going to take a look at U1K, Class D stock for, 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 for Urban One. I mean, spreads are tight. O order books liquid. I mean, I didn't realize this until right now. You know, sometimes you'll have, you'll have warrants for a lot of these high-flying stocks, so you'll see like U1W. I mean, Class D, I guess. We have K at the end. Uh, all right, so U1 and U1K. Sure. All right, what else do we have? Wafu, we've seen this one in the past. Pump and dump stock, and today, I mean, popped up and pulled back, didn't fully dump back down, but it looks like it's going to do that coming up here soon. Right, skip ahead to IQ, side list stock to a degree. Used to be. I mean, I took this off the radar for a bit. Uh, I don't know what happened even. I'm, I'm so ignorant to the news. I, I, I didn't even read what happened this morning on IQ. Um, I focused, again, just on a few other stocks. We covered this in Traders Talk between the NEO stock, between NCLH, DGLY, a couple others. Uh, they all happen here. Tencent seeks to become IQ's largest shareholder. Came out in the afternoon, big pop-up. 
Yeah. All right. So I guess a, a big stake in the company from Tencent Holdings. So huge run up in pre-market, pulled back at the open. This stock, you know, would have been a great stock to short. So I was focused on a few less expensive stocks than this, even going into the open just to trade more shares. But you know, moved with the market on the way down at least, ended up making a much sharper move, much like Neo did. Uh, both are Chinese stocks, so you know, kind of moved in tandem. But you know, IQ for right now, I'm going to keep this off the list. Just kind of flip the chart upside down, guys. After you see a stock make a big move up going in, in, into the morning, you wouldn't expect for it to make a second big move up going into the close. Same to be said with this right now. If it was closer near the lows going into the end of the day, I'd be more keen to put this on. But for right now, it just seems too flat. All right, Keep it pushing. You know what? I, I feel like we're good on the gainer side already. I want to go through maybe a few more just familiar names. Mark, M-A-R-K, from earlier this afternoon. Big pop. I feel like the run is done on this two volume crap down on this, but we called this out right off the breakout here. Uh, myself, Ben, right off the 250 level at first. Ended up doing a good job. I, I took a scratch at first, then ended up you know, getting back in. This ended up running back up through the 250 and topped off almost at three. Uh, again, though, I feel like the run is done on this trade. So for right now, I'm going to pass. Turtle Beach here, again, kind of similar to IQ, and the volume really waned off on this one. Weight Watchers, and then I think Macy's, and then we'll, then we'll skip ahead. Thought I saw Macy's on here. You got Nordstrom. You got a couple retailers we'll take a look at, I guess. I saw Terrence call out JWN earlier in our trading room. Nice call out at the time. It was trending up beautifully. Uh, you can see it topped off around 20. That's pulled back a little bit. So, you know, it's a good stock to day trade. Good, uh, good sideless stock. You know, I, I put that right in line with the others like, you know, Kohl's, KSS, Macy's. Uh, this home trade looks like it's building a Fausto flag. Near the highs. So home, at least for now, we'll, we'll add this one to our list, HOMA. Got a couple other familiar names here too, so I guess I'll hold off on the losers list for right now. Uh, Tupperware wasn't doing as much. Groupon's near the highs. I know that they split recently. We, we uh, kind of covered that just uh, in, in a past meeting. Uh, just pretty flat for right now. It is near the highs, but for right now, I'll skip. Uh, MRNS pop from earlier. All right, so we'll hop over to the loser side for right now, guys. If there's anything else that's up that's looking good, just let me know here in the chat board. A bunch of stuff hard to borrow to begin. Chest Peak declaring bankruptcy soon, I believe. I think that report came out really early this morning. Uh, Genius, how about this? I mean, I think more good news came out again on Genius this morning. Had a big pop in pre-market, but what, what happened right afterwards? So, you know, this kind of just goes back to what we covered in class, even from phase one yesterday. But, you know, you can't trust the news. So, you know, or at least the headlines off the news. And, and regardless of where the news comes from. I'm just saying that, you know, if you think good news comes out, doesn't mean that you should buy right then and there because look what happened immediately afterwards. A huge drop and then as soon as the market opened up, it tanked. It ended up basing off around 375. And you know, at this point now, I mean, it does seem like it could be a bit of an opportunity. It made higher lows. Wouldn't surprise me if this could make a squeeze through four and, and make a small little push up. Eh, for right now, we'll pass on this. We'll put this on our side list for the meantime. Uh-oh, my fun trade's pulling back a little bit. Still in for right now, and at, in a, it's at a 152. All right, I think that we're good otherwise, guys. I mean, really, we have kind of crapola on the losers list here. Bunch of stuff that's hard to borrow, so we can't really look to short it. Seabay, familiar name. We traded the stock kind of recently. Yeah. That's it, guys. That's all I got. So if there's anything else up, down, left, right, certainly uh, you know, type it in the chat board. Let me know. Got the CLIR trade. Still kind of holding around 305, 306.
from Greg. He said CLSN is moving. I'll take a look at that here in a second. I think my screen's frozen up here for uh, for a little bit. There we go. I uh, just want to look at apps pretty quickly to begin. APPS, a little pop-up. Not really doing a whole lot, though, otherwise. Got that from uh, Benzinga Pro. Uh, the CLSN trade, Greg, that's looking really good. Yeah, CLSN right now going into the afternoon. I don't know if I skipped over that. I think I, I, I think I did. If I can get my screen to unfreeze, I will show you CLSN. There we go. Ended up making a nice pop, new high right now. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the gripe I have on this is that it's going up too much over a period of time. I mean, the last two, three days, the stock's exploded from three to 450. So I feel like this should be boom or bust. This thing is either going to explode much higher going into the close or it's going to pull back. And unfortunately, I don't want to jinx it, but you know, it might end up pulling back pretty sharply. So be careful on this trade, but this has some real potential at this point, guys. So good call on the uh, CLSN. And then right as I say that, The CLIR just broke out, guys. New high of the day. Uh, question here from YouTube uh, in the chat board here, at, at least I see. Do you think the stocks are going to rise this week or go down? So keep in mind that, you know, we tend to focus on day trading here. We tend to focus on the day-to-day -day activity. Uh, you know, for as much as the market's moved up, my guess, and that's going to be counted exactly as that, just as a guess, I feel like the markets are going to pull back at some point. So, you know, we'll take a look at the SPY, but I've been wrong on that over the last week and a half. You know, if you go back on past afternoon meetings here, you've heard me say that directly. So I've been shocked at how, you know, how much the market's been kind of pumped up by the Fed over the last, you know, three weeks. But well, you could see, of course, going back into the end of last week, a big drop off. So that's where I was saying, well, you know, at least we're kind of coming back down to planet Earth here a bit. Uh, you know, I feel like over time it's going to pull back down. But for the rest of this week, I can't really give you a flat answer on that. Probably over the next 30 days, I would anticipate the spot to be trading much lower than it is. But again, it's just my guess. Uh, from Michael, China's uh, 10 cent seeks to become larger shareholder. That's for IQ. Yes, yeah, so we uh, just saw that before. So IQ, I mean, it'll be a great stock to follow day to day. It'll be a good sideless stock, certainly, especially if it remains shortable. Yeah, I spoke about home, Pat. So uh, each OME, I mean, it's still holding underneath, what is that, 770 Fausto flag building there. I make like a nice 40, 35 cent pop if it's a measured move. All right, guys. Well, I'll tell you, I feel like we're good. We have a good list. I don't want to force anything else on our watch list going into the close. Aside from that, we had a pretty good morning. Let's try and uh, close out the afternoon just as well, right? All right. So for anybody on YouTube, Facebook, guys, uh, streaming across social media, if you guys would like to learn more about what we offer here at Cyber Trading University, uh, just feel more than free to call the phone number down below on the banner. One of our education advisors will pick up, provide more detail for all of us here in the trading room. Uh, just uh, give me a quick sec. I'll post the uh, pics here just in the next minute or so. All right, guys. Talk to you all soon. Oh, actually, right before we part ways, I just got the ping from Benzinga here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's no bueno. Halted on the way down. Right off of not just any whole number, guys. But once we see a stock as volatile as this, it's not just whole numbers. It's just think five and ten dollar levels. 20, 25. Top directly off at $25. And then it just bounced into the point where it's halted on the way down. Wouldn't surprise me now at this point if this ends up dropping off much further. So uh, be careful on this UONE trade. Um, and again, even the uh, class D on that too. This one's not halted yet. All right. So I just want to bring that up, guys. All right. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.